Hello and welcome, I'm Marumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some Europa Universalis 4. The Cossacks. Yes. Yes! It's here! It's finally here! Um, now granted, this is a uh, pre-release um, copy, so it's not 100% guaranteed to be the exact version of the game that goes live on December the 1st, 2015, but it is most likely um, probably like 99% accurate. So this is a, a review build that I got a couple days early. I have permission to release these videos like three or four days ahead of time, uh, which is fantastic. Very excited about that. You'll see in the bottom left, we're on version 1.14. Um, what we're going to do, this is this campaign, as you probably saw by the title of the video, um, we're going to play as Uzbek. And um, this is something where I thought I saw an opportunity to break the game um, during one of the developer diaries, or it was maybe during one of the developer streams where they were showing off some of the new features. And I just was looking at the numbers and thinking to myself, that doesn't seem like it's balanced and uh, there could potentially be some fun to have. So, yeah, we're going to call this Uzbek Unleashed. Um, we are going to play as Uzbek. They are one of the stronger hordes. Why do we want to play as a horde? Well, hordes have this fancy pants new thing where they can raise provinces. They can destroy development and convert it into monarch points. Their drawback is that they are, um, they're Khanate, you know, they're in the Nomad tech group which means that they pay 75% more for their technologies, so it's very, very expensive. We'll go over the math a little bit more in depth as we play, but um, I'm pretty sure I'm not crazy and that the math is, is going to work out just fine. So, yeah, we'll play as Uzbek. Um, we could throw on Random New World. I mean, why not, right? It's, it's pretty cool. It's going to generate a Random New World for us. Filling in the holes, apparently. It does not take very long. Um... This is a completely different Random New World generation procedure compared to the original Random New World, and my experience with it so far has been that it is vastly superior at providing uh, realistic maps for us to play on. Alright, okay, so we're going to go ahead. We will make sure we have what options, what do we want to use. Uh, we're going to play with like normal settings for the most part. AI difficulty normal, Lucky Nations normal. Uh, what's this? Fantasy Random New World. Fantasy elements such as highly advanced empires. Ooh, sure, why not? That sounds cool. All right, and uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and play. We're going to check Iron Man mode. You'll see some things are a little bit different. Um, this game will not count towards your leaderboard score. You are not logged in. No idea what the leaderboard score is. I don't think it's actually active just yet because, um, again, this is a review build. But uh, yeah, we'll call this Uzbek. Uzbek Unleashed. So I chose Uzbek because I've already played once as the Oirat, and also this, the math involved with uh, like the, the way that I think that this is going to work out, it's totally obtainable with any horde, but I feel like Uzbek has a pretty good leg up. They've got a little bit more development than some of the other hordes. It's not as strong as playing as the Timurids, although the Timurids I thought was quite funny because the Timurids have uh, one of their national ideas is uh, plus one yearly legitimacy, but they're a horde. They don't use legitimacy anymore, so... Um, that's, you know, <laughs> kind of funny to me. Um, I don't know how that got missed. Whoops! Maybe they can get it patched. Alright, so we're playing as a horde. What does that mean? Well, as a horde, we get, uh, a few things. We get plus 50% national manpower modifier. We get plus 50% land force summit. We get 50% increased looting speed. We start off with Khan Abaul Kair Shai a 425. Pretty cool dude. Uh, let's see. What's new? What's new in the Cossacks? Well, uh, a big big new thing is this whole estates tab um, now playing as a horde we don't really get to experience the full amount of estates just because uh, my experience so far is that there is only one estate in a, in a nomadic um, horde which is the tribes so basically we give them territory um, and that makes them happy and if they have enough stuff and they're happy then they give us good things so if their loyalty is above 60% manpower recovery speed will go up by 15% and our cavalry will be 15% cheaper if loyalty is between 30 and 60, we only get one of those perks, the manpower recovery speed. And if we let it slip below 30, then we lose horde unity. Um, this is the loyalty number. This is the influence number. Influence is kind of tied in with the uh, disasters system, where if you let them get too much influence, it kind of like ticks up a, a disaster, like the Peasants' War, essentially. Um, it's really nasty. I did I did test it once, just to like see how bad it would be, and. Uh, I loaded up as France and I said, hey, let's just let the bourgeoisie like take over and it, it sucked. It's really bad. You don't want it to happen. Um, and then this is how much of the land that they own. They expect to control 33% of our territory. We have given them 37%. So as we expand, we need to give them more land. Otherwise, they'll get pissed off and they won't be loyal. 
And what does that loyalty buy us? Well, we can do things. Um, we can we can spend 43.53 ducats right now to gain loyalty temporarily for 10 years. Um, why would we want to do that? Well, because we can get free manpower, and we can get free Eastern Swarm Cavalry. Or we could recruit uh, a level 2 advisor who is 50% cheaper. Um, really, the only one that I, I think makes sense is this one here. Gain a general with 20 tradition, and we get 5 cavalry for free. That's 125 ducats. So I see it. It's like, okay, spend 43 ducats to gain the loyalty necessary. You have to be at 50 loyalty to actually be able to click this button. So you spend 43 ducats to gain 125 ducats worth of cavalry. And you get a free general out of the deal. That's pretty cool. And it doesn't take them above 80% loyalty, or sorry, uh, influence, so there's not really a huge risk there. So, um, yeah, I think we're going we're gonna to start off by doing that. We'll go ahead and click that. Um, next, we need to do raise host. Tribe's influence needs to be greater than 50%. Right now, their influence is at 48.3. So what we'll do is uh, grant them some more land. We'll go to estates, tribes, and uh, generally speaking, my experience, mar it's a very marginal amount of experience so far playing this. But um, we want to give them land that already has high autonomy um, or freshly conquered land because it does increase the autonomy floor. As a horde, we, we can only go down to 25% autonomy. But you'll notice that some provinces are at 50%. And that's because when it is owned by one of these estates, it sets the autonomy floor to 50% because it's controlled by a tribe. Um, it does some other stuff too, like um, having it controlled by a tribe increases the local manpower modifier by 100%. So, you know, I suppose in theory, we could like go look through and try to find a province that has high manpower modifier and give them that province um, just so that we get you know more of a benefit from it. But what I'm going to do is find, like, this one up here. Um, it's already owned by the tribes, never mind. Uh, this one's got high unrest. We'll give this one to them, sure. It's nine development, who cares? We'll give them this province. And that should hopefully take them high enough now that we can click our button. We will raise a host. So we just got a free general. His name is uh, Tahir Altan. He is god-awful. So I'm very disappointed. Um, oh well. We should probably do the normal things you'd do in EU4, like set rivalries and stuff. Um, there's been a major change, you'll notice this thing here, um, major change to the way that you like re interact with other um, AI nations and stuff. So uh, let's see, Golden Horde is friendly, um, we're friendly with them, uh, currently our attitude towards the Timurids is friendly, although they're hostile. We're probably going to want to improve relations with the Timurids, I don't want to fight them, you know, that's just silly. Um, but let's go ahead and improve relations with Kazan and the Golden Horde for just a moment. We're going to rival no guy because he's next to us and he's a jerk. We're going to rival the Oirat because, again, same reason. We're going to rival not the Timurids because that's going to just cause them to, you know, want to kill us too. Who's rivaled us? Um, no guy has rivaled us, Oirat and Yarkand. Yeah, we'll rival Yarkand as well. Let's not rival the Timurids. I think that'd be a bad idea. We'll go ahead and do some of our decisions here. Get some more missionary strength, gain some piety, uh, gain our yearly prestige. That sounds pretty good. Protect our brethren in Urzhar. Uh, Urzhar. That would be over here, the Oirat. I don't necessarily want to attack them right away. Nine development. Alright. Okay, uh, we'll go up to speed three. We're gonna actually... immediately pull this one back from Kazan. Because I want to actually... Wow, 17 days from Uzbek to, to Kazan? That seems like quite a long ways away. Alright, we're going to accept the alliance with Golden Horde. We want to ally the Golden Horde and Kazan. And, uh, you know, maybe if the Timurids decide to be friendly, um, we could do something there. So let's take a look at this new sim, right? This uh, diplomatic feedback thing. So this is um, this is where we basically get to say, like, the land that we want. This is obviously our land right now. We can say, like, hey, this is land that I want to take over. And uh, what that does is it tells the AI, it lets you kind of interact with them more. Like, hey, this is what I'm planning on conquering. So if you're planning on conquering it, then we're probably not going to be friends. Or if we're in a war together and I have this selected, you better damn give me that province if I have it sieged. Um, if they don't, then they take a penalty for having um, not given you the land that they were supposed to. Also, uh, trust is a new mechanic that is, well, it's, it's actually been in the game for a long time, but it was very opaque. You couldn't find it. Um, it was something you could calculate based on like hovering over their attitude toward you or something. Um, and just like translating the words, but now we can actually see the true number. In this case, it's at 50. Um, favors is a whole new system as well, where um, by being allies with them over a long period of time, you accumulate favors. By 
like giving them land and honoring defensive calls and all that stuff. You earn favors, and uh, you spend those favors to call your allies into war. So that's really cool. Um, what we're going to do is we're basically going to screw the Golden Horde and Kazan, um, and uh, we're just not going to do what we say we were going to do at all. Um, one would assume that uh, you, we should totally, like, you know, try to build up trust, but we're not going to do that. No, no. No, no. What we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of this raise province mechanic. This is what I think is really broken about it. So bear with me. I know we haven't really even unpaused the game yet, but here's how the raise province mechanic works. When you conquer land as a horde, until it is cored, you have the ability to raise it. Once you've raised the province, it destroys development at a rate of a minimum of zero if, if they have too little development. But so long as they have at least uh, two development in any type, then it will lower it by uh, by one, and I believe it up, it's up to like 33% of the total amount. So for like in this in this example, if we were to raise this, um, it's nine total development, so 30% of nine would be like 2.7, but it's minimum of one. So if we raise this province again, assuming this wasn't our core, it would go from 333 down to 222. Every development that you destroy in that way, you get 25 monarch points from. So mathematically, um, the best provinces to conquer are six development. Because you conquer them for 6 development, you pay aggressive expansion from 6 development, and then you raise them down to 1-1-1. One, one, one. You gain 25 monarch points of each category, because you've raised 1-1-1. One, one, one. Um, and then the coring cost for that province will be 30, because it's now 3 development. But you just gained 25. So you gained land, and now you only have to effectively spend 5 admin points to, to core it, which is pretty good. Now, hordes, a little bit later on, of course, will get the uh, core creation cost reduction. Also, if you have a claim... That'll reduce it from 30 to, like, 27. So basically, right from the start of the game, um, Conquest on 6 Development Provinces is essentially free. Um, you, uh, you do have to pay for the um, the actual, like, manpower and everything from being at war. But, like, Conquest, uh, it seems really, really good. Now, the drawback, of course, is that because we are nomadic tech group, we have to pay 75% increased tech cost. But I've done the math, right? And then again, I know I haven't unpaused the game yet, so you're probably like, come on, let's get on with it. But bear with me. There are, like, at this point, we're, we're tech 3 across the board. There are 32 tech levels. That means there's 29 tech levels remaining, 380 some years of gameplay. If you do the math, you divide that out, basically that means that once every 13 years, we need to do a tech level. Since we're paying 75% increased cost for our technology off of the base cost of 600, that means that every 13 years, we need to generate 450 Monarch points per category to offset our Nomadic penalty. So then the math becomes quite simple. Can we generate 450 Monarch points over 13 years from raiding and raising? And the answer is yes. That breaks down to about, you need to siege and raise one province about every eight months. Can we do that? I think absolutely. In fact, I think we can go faster than that. And so this is where Uzbek Unleashed comes from. I believe that with enough aggressive expansion that hordes, even with the 75% tech penalty, can tech up faster than Western tech characters. Which sounds crazy, and I could be wrong, but I've done some rudimentary math on it, and it seems to check out. So, that being said, let's um, let's go ahead and start a conversion here. Uh, we're going to want to check autonomy. Probably going to raise autonomy in provinces that have high unrest. We, we don't want to deal with rebellion. So we're just not going to deal with it. Um, we're going to secure an alliance with Kazan, assuming that they would... Uzbek is allied to Kazani rival Golden Horde. Well, I kind of ruined it already, huh? So Kazan's not going to help us out, huh? Well, that's alright. So, we're going to immediately want to declare war on this guy. Uh, but what we want to also do is get a claim started on one of the provinces, you know, just to save some monarch points. It's only going to save us six admin points to actually get the claim, so I suppose we don't even really need to do it. But um, we might as well, right? Uh, this is probably the best province to do it. Also, you may hear some really awesome music in the background. Improve relations with you. Diplomatic reputation, get some prestige. Protect our brethren in Uz Urzhar. Um, I believe that is, again, trying to send us this way. Uh, let's do the... Uh, improve our prestige. We could go for the free stability for sure. Now, I am very sad to say that uh, some of my keyboard shortcuts are no longer functional, because I don't know why. Um, I did do like a hotfix type thing to you know, port them over to this version of the game, but there's some, some weird stuff going on. So we'll see if I can get it squared away between today and 
well, tomorrow or Tuesday when the game goes live, but um, certain functionality has been lost. But there's new functionality that is exciting, so can't really complain too much. Build Eastern Archers. You can click this button on any army, and as long as the army just stays there, it'll train them nearby, and then they'll just auto-merge to the location. It's kind of like having um, rally points. Royal Marriage from the Golden Horde seems fine. Alright, so we're going to declare war. Um, the Golden Horde will not come in because we don't actually have any justification for them to, to do so. But what we can do is click this button here and promise them to ter territorial gains from this war. And now they'll join because they expect us to give them land. We can use the diplomatic uh, feedback thing to see, like, well, Golden Horde, they're a bit ambitious. They, they think that all of that belongs to them. So... Yeah, it's not, we're not going to be friends for very long, Golden Horde. By the way, Golden Horde, who hates you? Because I'm going to probably want to become friends with your enemies soon. Um, you hate Crimea. Uh, let's improve relations with Crimea. Uh, we'll come back from improving with the Golden Horde. And we're going to get this war started. Uh, apparently I just earned an achievement until death do us part. Secure a royal marriage with another country. Oh, <laughs> okay. You know what that is? That's because... Um, I'm playing Iron Man mode on a review build instead of my actual build. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure I've gotten a royal marriage before. Uh, anyway, that's kind of funny. Alright, we will hire some advisors. Uh, preferably just level 1s across the board. We'll take a production efficiency guy. We will take the better relations over time guy. Even though we have no one negative opinions just yet. And we will take the land maintenance modifier guy, actually. We don't need the discipline to win this war. The Golden Horde's way, way stronger than no guy is. No guy has no allies. So, as soon as we can, we're going to declare this war. Site Tribal Feud. The great thing about Tribal Feud is that it's a less aggressive expansion, 50%. Um, and again, we're going to call in the Golden Horde and say that, hey, we're totally going to give you stuff, I swear. Just kidding, not really. Um, so yeah, one of the keyboard shortcuts that doesn't work is my N key for selecting leaders. Drives me nuts. Oh well. Also, the B key to uh, create new units doesn't work. Don't know why. Um, also, the B key to deselect the bottom army doesn't work. Don't know why. Like I said, there's some issues with it, but... So, we don't have any, like, administrative power right now. Um, we just, we don't have any, any, um, real monarch points stockpiled at all. But that doesn't matter, because the <laughs> land we take over is basically going to be free. Alright, gain 10 army tradition. The tribe estate gets 10 influence for, uh, looks like 10 years. Uh, so I think we already have the influence fairly high, 65%. I would rather not have them go that high. I really don't want to start off with uh, a problem. So we're going to just say we do not need their help. We already have a general. Uh, the general who rolled basically as bad as he possibly could have. Um, so that's fine. You gotta bear with me on these keyboard shortcuts. I'm really trying to adjust to not having them, but it is it is not easy. So this is fantastic. It looks like if we're lucky, um, hopefully we can we can actually just back off a little bit and uh, let the Golden Horde do the actual combat. We do want to be the ones in, in charge of as many sieges as possible. So um, I am gonna do this. Uh, we're gonna say one of you guys. See, I can't even do this the way that I'm used to. Yeah, you can go that way. Uh, you can come over here to help out. We just want to get as many of the occupations in place as possible. And there's this new indicator here. See that little thing? A battle will begin. Super, super nice. Um, Muscovy's attacking Kazan. Good. Don't go for Noge. Go for that army. Kill that army, dude. Alright, he will arrive on the 11th of May. Uh, how quickly can I get there? On the 20th. Alright, in that case, uh, we're just going to split up the army a bit and focus on sieges. He can occupy the capital. Um, I don't think that's really going to be an issue for us. And we're still expecting him to take care of this battle with his 14k stack. I think he will. Our state is not very prestigious. Okay, he's coming back to Rin. Fantastic. That's going to allow me to be the one to do the siege then. We want to try to get every province occupied by us. That way, um, we'll have full option, like full choice on what to take. Except that he is sieging down this one, unfortunately. 
In which case, you can go to Rin. And yep, he's doing this. Now, in this in this now, you can actually see a participation score based on battles and stuff. So, basically, the Golden Horde's done 87% of the work in this war, and yet I'm going to take all the land, even though I promised them territorial gains. I lied. Haha. <laughs> Personal union for... Uh, okay, that's not good. Um, we'll let him... July 23rd. Uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what he does. He's actually going to keep his army in Rin or not. Our leader doesn't even have any siege value, which is kind of sad. Um, as soon as that army dies, we can actually lower our maintenance. Yeah, we don't even need maintenance on anymore. We'll just go to, all the way down to zero. Because we don't need it. Uh, we can loot for free. Uh, we get excellent loot. Um, this uh, one cab, for example, is looting 0.4 ducats. It's actually 0.3 times 50%, so it should be uh, 0.45 ducats. A little bit of weird rounding going on there. I don't know why it doesn't just show it to the 10th, uh, to the 100th place. Anyway, uh, we are in control of the siege. We just had a disease. Unfortunately, by losing my maintenance, we are no longer going to finish that siege. And, uh, yeah. Alright, well, I'm going to actually take a break here. Um, as always, if you want to show your support, feel free to click the like button. This is going to be a new campaign. We will resume this campaign and continue it until we find out one way or another whether or not Uzbek has truly been unleashed and the hordes are overpowered or not. So, as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. See you soon.